So uh, I hear you want some of uh, this. Dave. <laughs> Hard luck, Dave. Always knew you were a bit weak. Now, this was achieved by manually going through. So I, I would, we have all these keyframes here. I would, I would go to the raw or the unedited video. I would click on this little square looking guy in Vegas Pro. I'd go, okay, let's uh, zoom in. Let's move, uh, okay. This uh, center point here is on like kind of the center of his nose. I'm right, gonna move over a few frames. Okay, let's choose like this frame. I'm gonna move this center back to the to where the center of his nose is, and I'm gonna move on again, and I'm gonna do that again, and I'm gonna move on again, and I'm gonna do that again, and then I'm gonna maybe I'll go back a little. Oh, it kind of went off track there. Let me just adjust that there. I'm gonna go back a little. Went off track again. Adjust that there. You know, just kind of doing a whole, a rough pass of it, like every good few frames, and then filling in the details where they need to be filled all the way through until we create this effect. Now it's not perfect, but it's kind of, it's kind of a neat little exercise, right? But sometimes things can be tedious. Sometimes we, look, most of the time you don't need to do this. But how the hell do you make Vegas Pro do this for you? It doesn't seem to have a feature. I mean, it has a feature that's literally called motion tracking, but it doesn't actually specifically track the panning and cropping of an image. It's specifically used to track a piece of text onto this guy's nose. So if we, first of all, let's just start with motion tracking, okay? Because this is going to be part of the solution, but not in the way that this uh, was intended. So we're going to right click it, click motion tracking. This window appears. Uh, whatever, whatever clip that you're selecting, th that is selected in the timeline, that's what this window is dealing with. So make sure you're selected the one that you're going to be tracking. So we're going to click this add region button. We're going to, okay, I want to track to his nose again, but I just want to, I want to, I want this guy to do it for me. Now we could, um, Generally, you start from the, the, the first frame and you press this, this track forward button and it tracks forward. So if we watch here. There's Dave. <laughs> Hard luck, Dave. Always knew you were a bit weak. This box that I created has tracked to it, but it's kind of moving around weirdly. I don't want that. I don't want that data to have anything to do with what I'm doing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this. I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to, okay, I'm going to bound the box around it again. I'm just going to, okay, precision accurate. I like that mode. I'm going to change mode to location. I just want to track the location. I don't want to have anything to do with the rotation or the perspective. You might want to track the rotation or even the scale and the lo location, which I believe also includes rotation. Um, it's your choice. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to do location. Uh, in fact, also, I'm going to show you that uh, you can start from like the last frame. So let's move that up uh, and go track backwards. Uh, you can also start from the middle and go track both directions, although sometimes that doesn't work very well. Sometimes it only tracks forward and then when it tracks backward, it just doesn't do that. <laughs> but if you click track backward on its own, it's going to do that as long as you start from the last frame. Hey, so now Dave. we look, <laughs> the position oh, is changing. Right, Dave, always knew you were a bit weak. Uh, and I don't believe the shape or the rotation is actually changing. Pretty cool. Now, how do we translate this? Well, uh, if you're not familiar, I'm going to continue with the basic uh, tutorial for using the motion tracking because you're going to be, you're going to need to use this now when we get into the, the reels deals. All right. So usually this motion tracking feature is used to place anything. Like for example, you can place text on his nose here. Um, and what you do is, uh, once you drag text in, I just right clicked actually, and I clicked insert video track there in case you're not even aware of how to do that. I don't know. Gotta, gotta, gotta cover all the bases, right? You got to go to the effects on this text thing and you go Vegas picture in picture. Okay. And now, uh, well, I had the sample text already moved to the right position. Whenever you import, uh, whenever you apply Vegas picture in picture, it, it sets the scale to 0 0.5. So it's, it's just that whole frame is scaled down 
we're going to set the scale to one, press enter. So the scale in X and the scale in Y are both connected and boom, we're back where we wanted to be. Uh, so now Vegas picture in picture, this is compatible with the data from the motion tracking thing. So what we can do is, well, actually, where's our guy gone? Where, where's the, where's the information about our, the thing we were tracking? Well, you have, again, you have to be clicking on the clip that you're tracking and then boom, that information's back. This is the button that you press, hold and drag over to the thing on top with a picture in picture plugin applied to it. And then you let go and you press Vegas picture in picture. And there's Dave. Bam. <laughs> Hard luck, Dave. Always knew you were a bit weak. This is not what we want, but it's kind of fun. Good to know. This day. How can we use this to achieve what we want, though? Because we can, and I discovered how. It's actually kind of simple if you, if you, uh, I mean, you can figure it out yourself, <laughs> basically. But um, basically, uh, so let's just undo all of that. Uh, picture in picture. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna just delete the text. Okay. We have this motion data, the same motion data from before. We don't need to retract that because this is what we're tracking. This is what we're doing. Now, uh, we could go into effects and we could go, okay, add an, a new effect here and add the picture in picture onto here. But what happens is, uh, actually we're going to change the scale back to like one. Uh, yep. Uh, when we try to put the, the tracking data on here and we click Vegas picture in picture, make sure to click that. It says that the transfer failed. And I think it's, I think that's fair enough considering it's trying to transfer the data to itself rather than to another thing. So we're going to, I'm, I'm, I'm right. I'm okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm right clicking and I'm dragging this clip up. And if I let go, it allows me to move the clip here or it allows me to copy here. That's how I'm, I'm copying it there basically is what's happening. So now we're going to mute this bottom track just to make it crystal clear that we're working with the top track here. I'm going to go to effects in the top track, this motion tracker effect. I'm going to click this, this little remove selected plugin button. Now it's gone. There's no motion tracking here. I didn't really need to do that, but for the sake of clarity, this one on the top has picture in picture. This one on the bottom, let's click the effects. I'm going to get rid of picture in picture again, sake of clarity. The one on the bottom is the one with the motion tracker. We're going to select that and we're going to click and drag that data over to the one on top of the biggest picture in picture. And what happens? There's Dave. <laughs> no, Hard luck, Dave. not Always good. Knew you were a bit weak. What, what it's doing is it's adding the motion. So it's tracking this motion and then it's adding the same motion to it. So basically you're getting two times the motion when he moves this way like in the clip, what you achieve by pasting this motion data is he moves twice as much. So things are getting a little crazy here. Uh, we don't want that. That's kind of the opposite of what we want. So let's go up here. Um, we can, uh, we can just undo that, I suppose. Yeah. The undo button works perfectly. How the hell can we make sure that it does exactly what we want, want it to do, which is the opposite of that. Well, it's as simple as going into the picture in picture plugin that we're using into the angle and type, Oh, accidentally pressed the wrong button there typing 180. So we rotate it 180 degrees. Now all the pixels over here are over here. All the pixels over here are over here. Basically the image is inverted in like position and, and stuff, the position of all the pixels, uh, at least relative to the center, everything goes through the center to the opposite side or whatever. It doesn't matter. You don't need to understand what, what you don't. You don't need to have the words to explain, you know, where the pixels are or whatever. What you want though, is to click here on this bottom one, where your motion tracking is. Drag it over. Drag over that data. Click on picture in picture, and bam. There's Dave. <laughs> Hard luck, Dave. Always knew you were a bit weak. Now we're getting somewhere. So now I'm actually going to go to pan and crop and I'm going to right click, flip horizontal, right click, flip vertical. That's the same thing as flipping it 180. So I just flipped it 180 degrees again. Um, hang on. What's going to happen now though? There's Dave. Oh, <laughs> huh? Hard luck, Dave. Not great, huh? You're a bit weak. That's not what we want. 
what we should have done here, well, actually what we can do here is click and drag the pan and crop to the other side of the picture in picture. So now the picture in picture effect is happening first and then the pan and crop. So watch this. Uh, press the space bar, play. There's Dave. <laughs> huh? Hard luck, Dave. Always knew How about you were a that? bit weak. Very nice. So now we have all the control in the world. Uh, I know it's upside down, so you're going to have to get used to that. But you can zoom in anywhere. You can track the nose here. And it's easy as just dragging it in. There's Dave. <laughs> Hard luck, Dave. Always knew you were a bit weak. You can, you can put the nose on the top and it'll still track to the top because all the tracking's done before you're moving around the frame. There's Dave. <laughs> Hard luck, Dave. Always knew you were a bit weak. I mean, now that this is done, you can, you can even just delete this bottom guy. You don't need that guy's data anymore. Don't need this track anymore. Of course, I assume if you're in the middle of working on a project, you don't want to be deleting your tracks willy-nilly. But what else can we do? Well, we've got, we're not using any keyframes in here. We can zoom out and we can go, okay, let's bring, uh, let me bring up a grid. Okay, let's bring his nose to the center. And let's move all the way to the end here and just kind of zoom in. Right, what happens? There's Dave. <laughs> Hard luck, Dave. Always knew you were a bit weak. Zooming in on the center of his face as it's tracking on the center of his face. Simple. And you have all the adjustment in the world. It's awesome. Uh, so if you're interested in a more in-depth kind of exploration of other things that I've tried uh, in, in order to finally reach this conclusion of how to do this, uh, you can check the video up. Oh, wait, it's, it's way over there. It's way on the other side of, of the screen. But uh, it should appear there. Maybe it'll appear in the description as well. Um, actually, if it's the end screen right now, It'll probably be on the end screen. It's an unlisted exclusive video, and it's like twice the length of this, but uh, I, it's kind of more of a, st I'm telling a story. Although this was kind of structured you know, from one step to the next, kind of. You know. Look, I'm going to stop talking and say goodbye. Hope you, uh, hope you find this helpful.